Guys, let me tell you what we have. Right now, we are sitting at, really, truthfully, the place that we have, we've been, we've been rating all of you guys' beers for two years now, right? And I feel like before this, I don't think I, I probably ever had a Martin House beer. You know, and y'all have been going for a while or whatever else. But we are at Martin House Brewery here in Fort Worth, Texas, and mm-hmm. we are joined with Zach and John. Uh, and yeah, we're going to get into this, this podcast. This is going to be real. It's going to be good. Dope. We're excited. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome on. Yeah. Thanks for joining us. Thanks uh, for coming out. Yeah, yeah. Our pleasure. So, uh, if, if you want to give just a, a quick, like, uh, John, you want to go first and it's like, you know, what you do, you know, here at this facility, you, I guess you're the brewmaster. Yep. Yep. And it kind of comes going to that and kind of, yeah, take us from there. Yeah, so uh, I'm the head brewer. Um, I work underneath of Zach, um, but we work together to make everything happen from from grain to glass. That's that's kind of us. We orchestrate the whole thing. So I work mostly over the brewer, so I, it's mostly getting everything made and into a fermenter. And then we work together to work with Sellerman and the canning line to get it in the can. Okay. But, yeah, start to finish, I'm there. Yeah, nice, nice. Is that Zach? Uh, I am the director of brewing operations here. I basically orchestrate everything. I kind of just bring it all together. So uh, it starts out, you know, just an idea on the calendar. Uh, We put together recipes and then ingredients come in. Uh, Our brewers get the beer produced. Um, And then I sort of coordinate how we go about uh, packaging and scheduling everything and making sure everything's out on time. Nice. Nice. I, I I have to ask this question because I feel like y'all have like these crazy mad scientists working here, <laughs> right? And, and so earlier you just said like, you know, there, there's a concept or an idea. So like there's an idea of like a certain type of beer that y'all are like, hey, we're going to put this out. This is the date. This is our deadline. We're going to put it out by, right? And at that point, like, are you doing micro brews? Do you do you? How do you brew this damn thing to know what it's gonna like taste like? And like, you got these ingredients, these recipes, and like, I am I am so intrigued because there's been some crazy. How did when this I say happen? Crazy, <laughs> some crazy beers out of y'all's establishment, and uh, yeah, I mean, I I just can't get enough of them. Yeah, so right now we honestly do have kind of like the beer dream team. Um, We've been doing this for a long time collectively. Martin House has been doing this for a long time with kind of the same people leading the way. Um, and we, we literally sit down. You know, one of the owners, Cody Martin, is there. Suge, our marketing guy. Chris Kane, the head of QC. We all meet once a week. Suge, our marketing guy, is actually the one who comes up with most of them. So the funny thing is a guy that doesn't brew beer or know how to brew beer, he's the one that tells us, like, kind of what he wants to see. Nice. Now, we all collectively sometimes it's like a, I've got an idea let's elaborate on it but sometimes we just get hey man chocolate potato chip beer (laughs) okay (laughs) and in that case like a lot of times we do try to use the pilot system so we do have a small system and we'll we'll try it out try to taste everything just off that and then we can scale it up but we've been doing this for a long time so when you've made so many lactose sours like we know it's going to be sour we know it's going to have lactose in it we know about this much fruit works let's just send it so who's the one that goes to the candy store and finds blue gummy sharks and says, that's our next beer? Who's the one that comes up with that? That's, that's Suge. I mean, yeah. uh, you know, if you have an idea, if anybody has an idea, you go to Suge. You know, okay. it's funny. A lot of people, once I became the head brewer, was like, hey, since you're the head brewer, like, I got this beer idea. I'm like, Well, that's not really how it works. Go talk to Suge. And if Suge likes it, then I'll hear about it in the meeting. If Suge doesn't like it, I'll still hear about it in the meeting. And there's a chance it gets made later. But he's the Like I said, it, it's funny because marketing literally says – when we make the jokes too, it's like, "Yo, dog, do you make these ideas?" <laughs> like, like I, we see your we see your Whataburger posts at like two thirty a.m. Like, we know what you're doing. Right. You We're know? making a Whataburger right. flavored beer. Exactly, exactly. Right. And awesome. sometimes it's collabs. You know, yeah. we we did reach out to Whataburger. You know, we've done Taco Casa stuff. Um, so it's. <laughs> That's literally it. Mark. I feel like some people are coming up with some crazy ideas, and you're the one who's like, okay, how do I actually make that work? Exactly. That's what it sounds like. Exactly. That's exactly what it is. I mean, they come to us. You know, we've been brewing, making crazy stuff for a long time, so they come to us and say, hey, man, 
make a you know chocolate <laughs> potato chip is not a joke that <laughs> right, just yeah. came out you know and so it was like well i don't know no one's no one's done this before what do we do <laughs> you just throw a bunch of potato chips at it and some chocolate so how long right. has martin house been in operation coming up on nine years now nine years okay yeah. nice next weekend's our anniversary Wow, oh, so, nice. Damn, we could just one more weekend away from now. Yeah, I know, yeah. I know. We'll come hit. back for the 10-year. Hey, this this will be, be crazy. good because maybe, right. maybe we can drop this episode uh, or whatever to see how it goes. Usually we, we drop a, a week. Yeah, it'll be – this one will drop right after that. Right? Yeah, nice. so Monday. Cool. We're nine years old right yeah, now. Yeah. Let's yeah. go. What? <laughs> Future Martin House. Let's go. Yeah. Now, how many different beers would you say you guys have come out with that night? It's got to be uh, a lot. It's going to be nine years? Yeah, nine. it's got to be a ton, right? Well, so we – what was it? Maybe like – two or three well no dang it's been longer than that now probably like four or five years ago is when we really like went all in on going all in like Mm -hmm. we just decided we're gonna release a hundred and i can't remember what it was like 150 beers a year like that was our goal and that's been our goal for like Uh. five years you know double releases every single week it's always something new before that it was it was still a lot of new beers but nothing compared to like the last you know, the first four had nothing compared to the first, yeah. to, you know, the last. Because we're in Houston, and every time we go to the grocery store, it's a different Martin House beer. Right. Yeah. Like, oh, th- yeah. there's not like, oh, I want to go get a Martin House beer. Like, like you just don't yeah. know what you're what walking into. Yeah. yeah. Which I think is kind of the, the exciting thing about it. I mean, like, like, like we're looking today at some of our highest rated beers that we've done. And, like, you're on the list. Yeah. Martin House is, like, the top of the list for yeah. some of the highest rated beers. I think the highest rated beer I've ever had come from come from y'all's, y'all's, y'all's brewery, you know. Cheers. Thanks. So, That's I know. a huge compliment. I, but I'm going to tell you this right now. One of the lowest beers I ever had <laughs> yes, came that, from yeah, this that, brewery. That's why that we call it the Mad Scientist. Right? Mad, it's like, very expected. Yeah. yeah. So, so do you have like do you what is your like you've done this for like nine years, right? What's your favorite? What's your favorite beer you've done? Most proud of. Ooh. Well, most <laughs> most like, proud of could be different than best tasting. Well, favorite I feel like beer, that's right? like asking who's your favorite child. You know, yeah, <laughs> which, right. which kid's that, your favorite? Doesn't matter though. You always have a favorite no matter what. <laughs> yeah. let's, let's be honest. I feel like there's there's beers that I'm like I appreciate like how well they turned out or like um, how closely they resembled you know what we were going for. Um, so personally. I think maybe for me, and this was kind of one that set off our wild and wacky sort of a uh, journey, was our hot Cheeto beer. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I, I remember seeing, seeing that one. That. Yeah. I remember yeah. seeing yeah. it on that social one. media and being like, oh, I wish I lived up there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, it was probably the beer that I worked the hardest on, on just like trying to just figure out what so the hell was it. So did you that. like it just because it was good or just most closely resemble like a hot Cheeto? Uh, it was it was pretty spot on, I'll really? say. And yeah. it kind of worked. It was weird. It was like just the saltiness, the acidity, the the heat, it, the cheddar it, powder. It was cheddar powder yeah, worked out savory. <laughs> yeah, it was it was savory. weird how drinkable it was. Most people don't think about cheese beer, right. but I mean, I guess if it works, <laughs> it's just like a really weird michelada, you know. Yeah. Oh exactly. yeah, that's a good point. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. And this is also something good to note. I didn't think about this. Zach was the head brewer before me. So mm. Zach was head brewer for a couple of years, and then when he moved up, I shifted up as well. Nice, so sir. before, you know, he was doing the job that I'm currently doing for a couple of years before. So, so do you been, have a favorite, John? Man, John Spot favorite favorite beer. Well, Panama Red is probably my is probably my favorite beer actually. Um, I've been crushed since it came out. I've been crushing it. Love the concept. Um, really happy with Afternoon Siesta, the one you guys are drinking right now. Uh, we collabed with a local malt house called Tex Malt. Shouts out to the boys. Um, so all the grain is, was grown in Texas, malted in Fort Worth. So that was kind of cool. And like at the end of the day, I just want to drink Mexican lagers. Really, that's like <laughs> yeah. all I want. So yeah. I got to finally make you know have an attempt at it. So I was super happy when you came out with the pickle beer. Yeah, <clears throat> the best yeah. made. Cause, yeah, because nice. John called me and told me he's like, "Hey, there's this pickle beer out now." From Martin House. I was like, "What?" That is one of the of that. yeah. That's one of the few I see from you guys that seems to be consistently available. Is that right. is that like one of you guys' go to now? Uh, 
I hardly drink it, to be honest. <laughs> yeah. okay. It is definitely our most popular. It, really? It's, it's, our, our, money, it's our money maker. For really? Sure. Okay. It's yeah, our yeah. bread and butter, you know? Because yeah, we like it, but I can't sit back and throw a six pack of those yeah. down. Like, that's yeah. like one, and I'm like, okay, I'm, I liked it. I'm glad I had it. I can't drink a bunch of those, though. Yeah. You know what I mean? Well, I yeah, when you said you were excited. So, <clears throat> do you guys like pickle beer? I like pickles, and I like pickle beer. Like, it cook offs, like, sometimes. We'll spritz our brisket with pickle juice. Oh, yeah. So as we were spritzing. That out. That's never going to be on the my thing. Yeah. <laughs> Don't tell people the secrets. What are you doing? Well, anyway, I would spritz some in my beer, yeah. some of the pickle juice, and drink it. Yeah. And John knew I did that, so he called me and told me. I was like, dude, we got to get some of Oh, that. I bought cases when it came out. I, know. I was driving around looking for it. Nice. I don't yeah. drink it as much anymore, but when I do, I like we talked about earlier, I usually mix it with something else because it's like you yeah. can't drink very much yeah. of it, really. But, uh, so is that, has there been a beer that you're like, why did we make that? And like that was not <laughs> that missed. Uh, I mean, there have been beers that missed the mark that like on paper, you know, it should have worked. Um, I think we've done lately. It's been just cherry beers. We've yeah. had a little bit of a hang up. It's just on. not working out. Yo, some people really like that beer though. I'm, I'm yeah. surprised that people liked that beer as much as it did. We were complaining about like how much we didn't like it. And then we went in the tap room. It was already sold out. We we're like, hmm. Oh, oh shit. Yeah. well, okay. Yeah. All right. <laughs> it's just like a lot of people, um, you know, thinking of cherry or something flavored cherry. It's like medicine. Oh, so, uh, like, um, yeah. yeah. It's yeah, just I hard to get it, get it right. Yeah. yeah. And we've been doing, you know, our palates, we're pretty sensitive to stuff like that. You know, we don't really want over, at the end of the day, like I said, I want to drink Mexican lagers like all day long. So when I get something that's like way too overly, like overdone, yep. then I, it, it kind of a turn off for me. But that's what people want in a Martin House beer. Right. So right. even though we kind of missed the mark. Now, Hazy Maisie, the cornbread beer, oh. that beer sucked. That one cornbread beer. Whoa! It, 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 it didn't look good on paper. It didn't turn out good. <laughs> that one was. That one was. A, that well, one was a I missed it. Not only was it cornbread, but it was bacon. Oh yeah, well. bacon. Cornbread yeah. bacon. bacon. Oh, there you go. Oh, man. <laughs> how about the uh, How about the pizza beer? Yeah, pizza beer was wild. We were, we were just talking about that. Yeah, yeah that was like. Um, it started out on a, as a Valentine's Day release, and then we just immediately scaled it way up um and so i think just really it was like kind of just the attention was just phenomenal the the news covering it the just the reaction from everybody was worth it i guess it was funny because when when john bought those i'm like okay what we didn't know what because with you guys we don't really expect i'm like is this a beer that pairs well with pizza or is it a <laughs> beer that tastes like pizza yeah. we didn't know what we were getting like we took a sip like that's that's supposed to taste like pizza. That's a pizza beer. Yeah. We got a, we got a phone call. We have this this voicemail that's saved in like the company email, and it's this guy that's like, "Really, guys? A pizza beer? It tastes like like pizza. This is I, I can lose my number." We're like, "Oh my god, this guy! It was awesome. It was awesome." Uh, but that's a mission accomplished for us, you know. Like, if it tastes like it, right. if it tastes like it, and it's interesting, then yeah. Well, just the publicity alone, right? Just the, right. the people, the buzz that gets created, whether you like it or not. Like, there's still a buzz yeah. for it. So exactly. you have, like, 50 people saying we love it, and you got 50 people saying, what are you doing, right? Yeah. It's 100 people talking about it. Yeah, right. and, and we, want you, we want you to like the beer after you've bought it, but at the end of the day, you already bought it. That's right. Right? So right. we, you know, yeah, okay, you're pretty upset, but that's $11 in our p- pocket, and you, you didn't <laughs> learn your lesson. You didn't right. learn your lesson because you're going to come back and you're going to buy the next release just right. because. Why would you not? Yeah. And, and that's, yeah, because what else What else are they going to try to do? And that's, yeah. that's the mentality that I think we've all had with it. Uh, by the way, that was the lowest rated beer I have uh, done. <laughs> did you get to try beer. ranch? Did you get to try ranch beer? No. 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 And that's where I dropped. I should have brought. I knew I should have uh. done it. Uh, yeah, there's only a couple in existence now, and I think one's in my mini fridge. But nice. we did a ranch dressing beer <laughs> and a buffalo sauce beer. And the buffalo sauce beer was actually delicious. That sounds good. I mean, and do you tastes, mix it, them? Do you mix the two? You can. <laughs> yeah, uh, totally. It, yeah, totally. It makes the... Uh, Ranch beer a little bit more palatable. I mean, yeah, <laughs> I mean, eating my pizza beer is what I'd be doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then it's fun. Pizza like, beer that's and what ranch beer. Some, that, Pickle think, beer and ranch is great. I think cool. ranch beer, ranch beer is our lowest rated beer really? on Untapped because that's another thing. Zach follows Untapped pretty closely. Uh huh. I had to. I had to give up Untapped. 
<laughs> it just hurt my heart <laughs> seeing like <laughs> beers like I'd try really hard on and people just like just taking a shit all over it. It's right. like <laughs> this tastes just like ranch. Fuck you. There's one. Like, right. Oh, right. But at the, at, no. at the end of the day, aren't you like like you, you see somebody complaining about it and you're just like like who, wh- I don't know who made it. I don't I don't know who did that. <laughs> yeah. I'll talk to him. I, mean, I will. It's nothing constructive. It's yeah. just you know. But if somebody complains, be like, "Oh, it tastes just like ranch." It says ranch right, right. there. Yeah, right. Yeah. right. It literally. Hey, there's says some, that. somebody out there that's like their favorite beer. They're they're coming back here <laughs> all the time, trying to get that thing. You know, yeah. Yeah. this is different. And that's the point of Untapped. I kept trying to tell this to him, like, "Yo, don't get your you know your feelings hurt because the point of Untapped is you rate it on how you liked it." It, they're not these aren't BJCP judges like out there yeah. saying right like we have right. those guys that taste ranch beer and they also hate it they are they <laughs> also <laughs> hate it you know <laughs> but uh most of the time they don't know it's ranch beer we just give it to them and then <laughs> try this oh, right. try this throw, oh god throw it in a competition <laughs> yeah. but well, when we do our, when we do our beer review it's it's just like completely 100 percent biased personal perspective we're not like yeah. we don't have some standard it's just like how do how does john think of this beer how does alex think of this that's it that's all yeah, it there's is, no like know? what are the notes what yeah, and, just, and are they hitting those things it's like i like this beer and you give it a score right well maybe i'd say yeah. a couple things about yeah. it but there's no standard yeah. going and then we do of. judge the can Oh, we do. Oh, yeah. Guys. And by the so, way, you guys have awesome cans. Then we know right. we're winning. Yeah, we don't right, know. Who, right. I don't know who That's does right. your guys' artwork, but yeah. all of your cans are like stellar. We are love you them. saying they have great cans? I, great, yeah. cans. Okay. awesome. Right, we'll take. You it. stare at them all day long. We'll What's take it. We'll like, take so? It. Oh, okay. We do a lot of like barbecue competition, cooking, whatever else, right? And uh, I know, like, especially uh, having something you know really bad right before your turn in heightens your turn in a little bit because they're like oh my god that was so horrible but this this is what i'm talking about right so we've been that that and we, we've gotten you know good reviews and, and one and whatever else we've also been the team that has turned in uh devil's, devil's anus devil's <laughs> anus chicken <laughs> that you couldn't eat it it was so freaking it was scorpion uh pepper uh barbecue sauce that we like a sugary. You didn't taste it before you put it on there. No, it was so oh, hot. Nice. It was so hot. We and all told I didn't, you to stop putting it on there. <laughs> you just kept down. Well, I didn't it. realize it would be that hot. I thought it was like, obviously, if I'm doing a you know honey, I did I got kind of like a homemade sauce, honey and and uh, like your favorite barbecue sauce and some seasonings, and then um, added this this scorpion uh, Tabasco sauce. Right, you would think that that is oh, Tabasco, like a Tabasco honey, sauce. Right? Mm. Like, you've had Tabasco growing up. It says Tabasco. I know what that is. Yeah. No, it didn't say fucking. When I read the word scorpion, I never thought scorpion pepper. I just yeah. thought, oh, that's a cool name. Cool. Thanks. Oh, That'll be like good. You thought it was just a scorpion <laughs> yeah. brand. To be- oh, right. Okay, okay. So I'm dousing it, and they're like, they're like, hey, you better ease up. I'm like, no, brother, I know how to do it. I've been doing this for 30 yeah. years. No, so, you said, it'll cook off. Yeah, it'll, it'll, it'll cook off. No, it got hotter is what it yeah. happened. Yeah, Jan, it was, Jan is the mad scientist of our group. So oh, we have, we have yeah. a nice method of everything we do. Then it'll be like competition time. We're about to turn it in. I think this you could use yeah. some rattlesnake dust yeah. on it. Well, well, wait, wait, wait. We never did that before. You don't try that at competition yeah. try that at home good time to try something new yeah <laughs> it is but you know what whatever it all i know is people that went after us did not do well in chicken because they couldn't taste <laughs> yeah it. you scorched the rest they, of everybody else like, yeah no amount of crackers and milk was getting that out of there yeah so that's what so i we that's kind of where the ranch thing was going we decided that like winning a gold medal is cool and everything but it's not going to really help us sell beer at the end of the day but getting banned from all of the beer competitions, <laughs> that's going to be some hardcore publicity. I'm really tired thing. of going to these yes. things. So <laughs> we just put – we, like, have been sending ranch beer into every category of these competitions <laughs> all over the United States. And, like, so these guys are, like, sitting down to drink a stout, and they get ranch beer. Yeah. They're that's sitting so down awesome. to drink. And it's funny because depending on the category – it does better or worse. Yeah, yeah that's funny. you know, it's like oh, the color <laughs> looks how it should. Or we actually got an okay in like the pale ale category or something. Like, it <laughs> For was, like, the wild. ranch beer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're like all right, very yeah. herbaceous pale ale. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but there's also guys like oh, this tastes like bile and like <laughs> beef like, stew, <laughs> and we're just like what? I love beef stew. Oh, man, that's <laughs> yeah, yeah. Not when you're thinking you're drinking a pilsner, you know. But, right. <laughs> well, the last yeah, we're time, definitely, and we have had judges recently getting kind of upset. They're like, "Yo, like, you're like, like, once you try that, your palate's just done. You know, mm. you just 
took ranch yeah. powder to the dome. <laughs> Liquid smell ranch some, powder to the dome. Smell some coffee beans. Exactly, is all I'm saying. Exactly. Exactly. Right? Yeah. We've all been in the in the, the cologne and perfume stores. Yep, we know what yep. to do here. But we're not holding up. So if you're That's listening to this and you're worried, they're coming for you. <laughs> oh, yeah. We're still sending ranch out. It's I will covered. say there's more ranch, like ranch dressing mix powder in that beer than actual ranch. Uh, like, oh, right. wow. so, there might be. Yeah. <laughs> uh, reading the back of it, it's like one of these packets uh, makes about a gallon of ranch. And we put, you know, probably at least 10 times that Insane. in a gallon of beer. Wow. Right. So, right. So you guys are actually just making ranch. Yeah. <laughs> right. Essentially. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And alcoholic milk ranch. ranch. We, we put more lactose in our lactose beers than in, like, milk oh, at yeah. the store. Yeah. So... We I'm surprised James can drink those. I know, right? I know. Our other guy who's not here, James, he's lactose intolerant. He drinks those, like no problem. Yeah. Well, well, we tell them. him all the time, like, no, no, you'll be fine. It's not, yeah. not a big deal. There you go. You, you he just drinks punch them. through that but, ceiling. Yeah. But, <laughs> right. I think he has problems the next day, but he's always Walk like, up. well, I don't know what it was. <laughs> oh, yeah. Or there's so right. much lactose, we he just like, obliterates what his brother is. Yeah. That's it. Well, last time we were on location with a brewery, it was the uh, Backfish Brewery in Pearland. And when we were talking to their brewmaster there, he was he was telling us, which was surprising to me, that the hardest beer to brew was a light lager. Like, do you agree with that? Is that really like the hardest one to do? Yes. Well, I'd like to see them make a ranch beer first. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. but, yeah. <laughs> that is just ranch, just if you guys were wondering. But no, uh, yeah, there's just nothing to hide behind. Yeah, it's because it's, it's just got to be 100 percent, or you're. It's just yeah, yeah, that makes sense. It's yeah. just very delicate, so yeah. anything that you know might go wrong will be very obvious. Have yeah. you guys made one? Just a regular light beer? Uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, yeah, the um, pill, the pills, the pills one. Yeah. Yep. And That's I mean, our lightest thing. that we did add lime to the afternoon siesta, but like we were tried it before the lime, and it was totally a solid Mexican lager. So this is a really good beer. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm this enjoying is afternoon this afternoon siesta right here. Yeah, yeah, That's what yeah. it's called. Yeah, yeah, this is really great. This thing I, try one of those. I did the um, the honey bunches earlier, which yeah. is a 10 percent uh, alcohol by volume, which is a great starter beer. Like, yeah, I think if you're going to start out with a beer, you need to go one with at least over a nine, right? Yeah, and that gets you kind of like in a you know in a zone a little bit, right? Sure. We used to have a twenty percent fire oh, fireball inspired beer, fire yeah. cello. Oh, that's Alex. And we would do we would do little like chug because we can't take shots, you know. So yep. we did like chuggies. So it's like a five ounce pour. And like if we still had it, you guys all would have already had one. So sorry. I mean, I'm sorry that <laughs> right, you, right. you know. No, I love it. Though. That was how we all like as soon as we get off shift, like everyone's like, let's go. I like fireball. Everybody take a chuggy. We, chuggy. we have a joke that uh, Jan never rates anything below its alcohol percentage. Oh, so if it's nine. a nine alcohol, is he going to give it a nine at least? So. Right. Right. <laughs> we, uh, if I was scoring that yeah. one, I, you know what? I'm not going to say it. But uh, I was, I was going to say maybe when we take a break or whatever else. Well, we're going to do a beer. We can oh, do, we a, beer do a beer review. We're, we're doing yeah, one. We we're, so we'll do a live beer review. Let's yeah. go. All right. I'm in. Yeah, yeah. sweet. But sweet. you get to be honest with you. I know you created these sons of bitches, but you still got to be honest with yourself. Like, yeah. how do you rate this beer? Or the beers that you like. Are you right? suggesting they would lie? Well, I'm just saying that. No, I'm just saying that. <laughs> wow. It's a perfect These are our guests. You cannot let that skew what your number is going to be, is all I'm saying. No, for sure. <laughs> we make a lot of good beer, and we really yeah. do care about making good beers. At the end oh, of the day, sure, we want yeah. to make good beers, and we want to make the most drinkable ranch beer possible. Right. <laughs> but we also try a lot of really crazy stuff, Hell yeah. and we, we do fall short, you know? Well, yeah, but if well, you're not yeah. shooting for the moon, right? How does it? If exactly. you're not shooting for the stars, you never land on the moon, right? Exactly. So exactly. you got to. But I mean, I'm, you're making 150 different ones a year. It's crazy. <laughs> it's so so crazy. Uh, yeah. I mean, there's a reason you guys are our most like tried beer review oh, beer by you know far. I mean? Yeah, by far of all the beer companies out there. So. Which, and th- th- I guess the really good thing about it is that it's uh, not a cl- maybe it is so eclectic. You've got so much stuff coming out that when we go to the store and we look over, we're like. Well, shit! I've never seen that before. We got so somebody buys it, you know, whether it's John yeah. or Matt. So much money. Never spent. Alex. He doesn't really buy beer. Uh, <laughs> Are you just, serious? He just uh, yeah. but I usually like showing up with beer. Uh, okay, well maybe I don't do that either. I brought beer uh, back from California. You did, um, but that's what I'm saying. That's one of those things that you know y'all y'all have so much out there that that we we've gotten beer and brought it home and, and we're already drinking the beer, right? Somebody somebody in the garage is already drinking that beer, like. Damn it, I brought it for a review tonight, and somebody else is already drinking it, you know? Yeah. So. Well, there's a lot of times we'll be looking at everything. We're looking at the shelf. It's like, okay, another sour, another sour. A sour with 
blue shark gummy bears. Okay, like I'm gonna get that one, you know, because it's just it's it kind of sets itself apart by just being so unique, you know. Totally. Yeah. And then it's just an extra plus when it actually works. <laughs> like I said, it's right. mar- it is marketing. It's the marketing guy that tells us what he wants. Yeah. He knows what's so. Shug. So would you say his name? Shug, Shug, yeah. Is that Shug. the dude on TikTok? Yeah, that's yeah. our yeah, it's our boy. Okay, yeah, yep. yeah. Okay. yeah, he's out of Big Texas, or he would have been here too. But he's he's out at the festival drinking beers. So nice, nice. Mm-hmm. Okay, I got a question. Uh, we've been getting a lot of these beers, and I don't remember if there was one from you or not. But uh, hard pour, like they keep saying, you got to do a hard pour on these beers, and I'm like, I understand you're supposed to. I don't know, turn your beer can upside down or whatever. Why? What What the hell is the point? I don't get it. Yeah, yeah, like there's one where you put the beer in the glass and then you basically just pick the beer up and just let it pour into the glass. And as it fills up, you you pull it up the same well, time. Well, they're usually right? nitro beers, aren't they? I think so, but I don't. I still don't understand why are we doing that. Can we just get? Do you guys do those Zach, kind of things? You want to you wanna go or? Uh, <laughs> I mean, we we haven't really done a nitro beer, um, and I'm not too sure. I mean. I feel like like a really hard pour is going to um, break out a lot of the CO2 in solution. So, you know, it might feel like a denser, fuller beer. Um, I don't know. That's my... Wow, 150, really 150 beers a, but, but, a year and you guys haven't done a nitro, nitro beer? Yeah, yeah, exactly. well, yeah, it's yeah. a really hard setup, actually. Really? You yeah. have to have, like, the weirdo, like, widget thing, the little thing that yeah. rattles in your Guinness little can once there, you pull yeah. it out. And, yeah, it's... It, it requires they, a little bit more equipment, I think. Uh, what, the last no, one we did was yeah. flat after we poured it. I'm saying, I'm saying, saying it didn't have the widget you either. Couldn't, you couldn't shake this, this, this thing up and get a, a head to even form on it. Uh, yeah. It looked just like cold coffee. And I was like, yeah. this wow. is not. Yeah, they didn't, it was have, weird. they didn't have the widgets in it. Like no, yeah, correct. Whatever, but yeah, they no just widgets like, in them. Just pour it hard. I, uh, I can't I pour think, this shit hard I think enough. that's why. I think that's why they're calling for a hard pour because there is – uh, no widget. Yeah. Well, and if it says like straight up like hard pour, that's what I was saying. It was like nitro, but also like I don't know if you guys have had smoothies. You're supposed to kind of mm-hmm. mix those up before because there's so much uh, stuff yeah, at the yeah. bottom. Yeah. Uh, you guys down yeah, in Houston, yeah. Irvin South, like they yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely yep. have yeah, that. So I think that's probably. And I mean, somebody got really excited the hard pour method, like or the slow pour method. Um, beer stot out in Colorado had that one. You just like pour super hard, let the let the head build up, let it drop. Pour again. It takes a couple minutes to like pour your beer, but you get this like creamy, like whipped cream head on top. Mm. That's just awesome. It's That's a lot more good. resilient too. Like it stays for your whole beer almost, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. Hmm. That's now, really now good. you just yeah. drinking personally. I was wondering because this is another thing that the uh, brewmaster back at Backfish said is that uh, we were asking him, like, like when you go home, you're just surrounded in beer all day long. You get tired of beer, like. He just he when he get home he just drink bourbon. So ah, I, was, I was wondering yeah. if you got the same thing going on. I do drink a lot. I have a yeah. lot of whiskey. Yeah, yeah, I have a lot of whiskey. <laughs> um, but I'm, no, I'm I, into I, bourbon. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm and I'm all I'm all over the board. I got I got scotch, rye, bourbon. Like I like to try. Just like Martin House releases a lot of beers, I like to try everything. I do too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But at the same time, I'm also I think a lot of brewers will say the same thing. Like yo, know, Coors Banquet. You know, Modelo Especial. Like at the end, it sucks because I got cases and cases and cases of cases of beers. Not even just from Martin House, right? Because like when we go anywhere, most of the time we drink for free and we're gifted beers and stuff. And yeah, get home. That's for like when the guys come over and I'm like, hey, drink whatever you want, go for yeah, it. Yeah, <laughs> no way, this is crazy. I'm like, yeah, yeah. Well, I'm sure it's yeah. the same for you, like because people when they find out like I like craft brews and I like IPAs, like oh, you must hate like Coors Light, I'm like. No, I, yeah. I still like it. Yeah. You know, it's 100 degrees outside. I want, like, a Coors Light kind of beer. You know, I don't want some stout, you know, on a hot, hot day or whatever. Yeah. So I'm sure it's the same for you. That's totally totally the same way. Yeah. yeah. I had to slow down on the whiskey buying. I, like, started coll- I'm a big collector. So I, like, <laughs> built this big, like, 50-bottle collection. And I was like, all right got to drink it down so i'm you not might buying a, as yeah. much you might have a problem uh, yeah i know <laughs> right. i know it's decoration all right it's right. decoration right. and then i got to a problem too where like i would drink you know it down to where there's a little bit left and i wouldn't drink that little bit unless i had the exact same bottle to replace it yeah yeah totally <laughs> uh, you have a problem totally. i might want that wine later no for sure yo michter's american like the blue bottle is so good and that's how it is every time yeah i'm just like man i'm down to a half bottle i'm gonna go get another bottle before we crack this open again have, do you yeah. have do you have an infinity bottle by chance? I haven't started one. Oh yeah, that's 
I've been wanting to. Every time somebody comes over, like they're like, what is that? <laughs> so explain what that is. Or, explain what an infinity bottle is. So I put an ounce of every whiskey I get in. Now, if it's a, <laughs> like if it's like a peated scotch or it's like a really intense rye, I'll do a half ounce just because I don't want it to like take over. Overtake. But yeah. at this point, I'm like 70 plus in that bottle and wow. we'll get it up i get it i got it pretty cool i got it almost like 90 percent full one time <laughs> but most of the time it gets up like three quarters full and we'll drink it down to like half or a quarter but you're just mixing yep. all these different bourbons and yep okay it's yeah. the suicidal okay. of liquor exactly yeah. well we used yep. to do that in college but it was just like liquor bottles that were sitting on the top of the there cabinet you know. like as decoration <laughs> That's the you that's the punch bowl you're talking about. There. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> we would go up there and pour like there'd be like little bits in each bottle and pour that and make shots. And that's a Long Island iced terrible. tea. Though, I guess. Yeah. Oh yeah. It was terrible. It wasn't good bourbon. That's how it got invented. Probably somebody's yeah. like, "Damn, this tastes like tea." Yeah. Right. <laughs> well, and it's like super complex because there's so much stuff in there. So like when you smell it, you're like, "Oh, it's gonna be like really smoky," and then you try it, and it's like really strong bourbon up front, and then it gets like really spicy rye on the tail end. It's like a really like my infinity bottle is pretty dope. Really into it. Nice. nice. Well, speaking of all that whiskey, all one. that whiskey and bourbon. I'm start when, one. Oh yeah, when we were walking in here to our little recording area, we passed by those barrels out there. So, do you guys have like another kind of whiskey, kind of bourbon beer coming out soon? Uh, yeah. Let's see. The next one coming out is going to be. It's like a rye imperial stout that we have aged in some rye barrels. Uh, we're about to send one into barrels that will be our. Um, like a Thin Mint Girl Scout cookie oh. Imperial Stout. Oh, okay. So. We'll show you guys the barrel room here in a little while. But, yeah, currently we have a, a pineapple IPA in barrels, um, oh, pineapple yeah, painkiller. Uh, we just um, canned up our nine-year barrel-aged release, which is an Imperial Rice Stout, which is pretty wild. Um, nine years. Wow. Yeah. Well, it's <laughs> In honor of like oh, the nine year, year anniversary, yeah, it wasn't yeah, in there. It's only yeah, years. okay. Well, yeah, about you a think year. They, they barreled it when they opened this place? I was, I was like, jam, okay, maybe. <laughs> we have lost barrels before, like we've let them sit in there for like a really long time, and then found them like a couple years later. Like, oh, I yeah. guess we'll go Limited ahead and edition. serve it, yeah. yeah, and we'll like wait until the anniversary to do that. But for the most part, we actually have a pretty. What are the percentages really on those things? Like when they're in those, I mean, it's got to be pretty high, right? Because I mean, you're, oh, you're getting kind of some of the whiskey from the barrel, right? Yeah, it's usually at least 12. At least 12, yeah. yeah, yeah. We've done some lower, I guess maybe like 8. Be, eight's like the lowest maybe. Yeah. But yeah, up to 16. Ooh. Is that the highest you guys done is 16? In the barrel, yeah. That's wow. funny. I mean, we've done yeah. 20, we've done 22 and 24%, but oh not barrel-age stuff. That's... So, so is, there, is there a certain alcohol uh, percentage that you have to be at when you go to sell or go be able to go hit on a shelf somewhere do you have to be below a certain point or can you be whatever you want no not in texas you can it's not like liquor at some point <laughs> oh, well, yeah yeah, yeah. I mean, that's, there's a certain point where it becomes like a schnapps or something right? <laughs> or, uh, um it's kind of weird i think as far as like selling uh it's either 5.2 or higher or 5.2 under it's like technically um like labeled as a lager or an ale, which is kind of weird because you can have both that are, you know, in different mm-hmm, directions right. of each other. Um, but that's just like in the eyes of the law. Yeah, it's, um, and it's tag. That's for like tax purposes mostly. Sure. Yeah. Um, but I mean, as far as ABV, kind of just have to like just make it to whatever the label says. So. Yeah, you're allowed. You have to be point three percent. Like you're allowed a point three percent swing of what's on the label. Mm. So like we have to hit okay. our mark when we put you it out. You can't say it's five percent; it's actually twenty. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Um, but for the most part, yeah. I, I so don't so think you could right. have you could have in a can a a twenty a twenty five percent ABV. Off, now, the, that you'd off want the record, to. off the record, maybe, <laughs> maybe, maybe. Okay. Uh, um, we have done it. But we only sold it out of the tap room. Yeah, exactly. Okay. It was like a very source. small quantity. Dude, dude you can you imagine, like, dude, I just had one freaking <laughs> beer, sir. I don't <laughs> know why it. you're – look, I only had one beer. That's it. Are you, you guys know? familiar with the shotgun method? You guys know how no, – Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, so we actually had one of our guys shotgun. Shotgun. The 22%. Oh, and they were tall boys. They were 16-ounce cans, too. Sheesh. Not 12s, oh. 16s. 
That's a bottle. That's like a freaking <laughs> like yeah, a right. six pack of beer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Easily. I yeah. try it. Wow. How, how messed Easily. up was he after that? <laughs> uh, I think he had a pretty bad round of golf. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We were, they were disc golfing. and he just say not, he wasn't he driving do, home that Yeah, night. he didn't do too well. He didn't do too hot. I love this. This yeah. is like – I think this is like what – like every new hire you have has to run the gauntlet. You know what I mean? they got to go through the, 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 the shotgun. Yeah. Hey, your first day here, when you're fixing to leave, you're like, take the shotgun now. By the way, drive home as quick as you can. There what is wrong? It's going to hit you. <laughs> well, so fun. So, uh, first week that I started, Zach was training me. Yeah. And uh, it was during the summer. It was so hot. And one of my, you know, like I said, it was, so we used to be allowed to drink on shift. Um, not, nothing, you know, excessive, but we were allowed to have a couple beers. Right. And, uh, you know, one of the seller men was like, hey, man, you want to do a shotgun? I'm like, yeah, sure. Zach was like out in the forklift doing something. I was like, yeah, I'll, I'll do a shotgun with you. <laughs> well, he comes around the corner with this, like, the silver bullet of what we were canning that day, which was a 12% coffee stout. Ooh, in, a six, in a 16-ounce can, it's like 100 degrees outside. Oh. And like 10 a.m., I had been fasting. I had like nothing in my stomach at all. <laughs> and I'm like, dude, for real? He's like, come on, bro. It's your first week. I'm like, you got to do it. Fine. <laughs> you got to do and it. I just remember like being like super jittery. And like so like Zach comes back in. I'm like sweating. He's like, yeah, I heard you did a shock. I'm like, yeah, I did. Oh, God. <laughs> But yeah, it was yeah. Right. Uh, it's like having a meal and like super pump full of alcohol at the same right. time. And caffeine. Yeah. Yeah. And caffeine. Yeah. And caffeine. Yeah. Uh, we are pure crazy. chaos. We, we nothing are, bad's ever happened with upwards and downwards. We at the are same pure time, right? chaos. Yeah. <laughs> we are pure chaos. I mean, that's a really good beer, guys. So this is guys, a really good. This one is. Uh, if you don't mind, like take like I, I know there's a process when you get this recipe and whatever else, but like. Obviously, you know th- this lime. You definitely get this li- lime in here. Uh, it does take like taste like a uh, a Mexican lager, but it is so much better than like a normal um, Mexican lager. Like, what well, I mean, like like what's like a Modelo or a Dos Equis. This is this this hits a lot a lot more flavor than this. Yeah. Tell them what you're talking uh, about. Huh? Tell them what you're talking about. I, I am. Yeah. Sure. What are you talking about? No, the name of the beer. Tell them the name of the beer. I forgot it. Afternoon siesta. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. Uh, why don't you tell them, John? You got this can right there. Uh, so, so just for something, th- I know if it's a simple beer or not simple beer to make, but like the process of y'all just telling you, like, like did y'all test this out in, in a microbrew before y'all did it, or you're like, you know what, you've done it long enough. This is this is what we're adding to this. Like, are you adding a real lime? Are you adding a zest? Are you doing uh, um, what do you call it, true lime? Is well, that, is that a thing? let's see. In this one, we did a lime concentrate. Um, so basically just like, I don't know, concentrated lime juice, you know, okay. like super fortified amount of lime. Uh, and that was added like as late into the process as we could just to keep, you know, the lime as fresh as possible in the actual beer. Um, you know, if you're doing it, uh, earlier in the process, like on the hot side, you know, you might like lose some of the more delicate, um, you know notes of that this was a pilot batch uh, yeah. so unfor- like unfortunately like by the time people hear about this beer it, it's it, it's it'll be gone. gone it's a tap uh, room it was a tap room only there it is okay. oh, yeah, it'll probably man. be gone yeah sorry so well, this is why you and gotta- we're drinking we are drinking these hard like yeah. right now this, this is, is a staff <laughs> favorite <laughs> <Yeah>. for sure <laughs> yeah. right. the staff's going crazy. Well, we're gonna, gonna say, have to get a pack to take with us the, James this is why you if they sell them we'll have to yeah this is why you need to come here yeah yeah, yeah. yeah if, if you want to go to the stores and get Martin House, great. Okay, whatever else, but you got to come to the brewery. Yeah, we have. I mean, we have tap. We have like on tap only here. Like there are some stuff we don't even can up. It's just, just in a tank. There's some stuff we only sell behind the bar and over the counter, like afternoon siesta. So if you like what we do in stores, then definitely like you have to yeah. show up. If you're to lay over at DFW. Stop on by. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or love yeah, field. Sure. Yeah. And the atmosphere is cool. Like outside. Oh, this place oh, is yeah. great. Somebody oh, yeah. playing. Big covered open area, band playing, Huge everything. Huge amount of space nice out view. there. Yeah. We're doing a dog event right now. Yeah, shout out to the dogs. Everybody man. bring their dogs. Yeah, I saw a bunch of dogs out there. It's a great yeah. day now there. You see that? I think it was oh, huge. Yeah. It's also a ride him in, too. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. That was, was weird. It was another dog. Right. Do, do you guys sell outside of Texas? Not yet. Not yet. Because I was wondering, because like, uh, we have a lot of non-American listeners. They may not know that oh. certain states have 
certain you know, alcohol percentages. So like in Oklahoma, right, you can't be well, – It used to. Over, yeah, oh, it used to. I don't used know to be three point, three point whatever. I think 3.2, yeah, yeah, was what it was. Because back when now. I was in college, we would have to take the kegs from Texas to o- OU yeah. you know, and bring them up there because they couldn't get the percentages you know, we have down here. Yep. It's like I had a roommate in college. He lived in Kansas. We went up there one time, and we stopped. And got, we got beer at a liquor store. So the next day we were going out to the lake. He's like, hey, we got to stop and get beer. I was like, we still have a shitload. He's like, oh, we can't take that beer to the lake. Oh, you can't be, yeah, you can't be on the lake with it. And I was uh. like, what do you mean? It's beer. He's like, no, we got to get the beer from the gas station. I was like, what the fuck is the difference? He's like, <laughs> it's the 3 2 beer. It's mm-hmm. on like all the warnings. Like, or I think it still has, the last time I was up there drinking high percent beers, they Well, was this was still, just like, like regular, kinetic. I mean, it was the same, like, just say like Bud Light. Yeah, but uh, the one the liquor right. store it was a four point seven or four point five, yeah. whatever, and one's three point two. And if you work it out, I mean, it's like what a couple beers per case difference. Yeah, yeah. Mm. it sure. matters. It yeah, matters. Like, this Shouts out to boating safety. Yes, right. <laughs> <laughs> well, we yeah. had somebody on our yeah. live this I'll morning say, saying that if somebody's going to get drunk and drive the boat, what is they're going to get drunk and drive the boat? It doesn't yeah. matter. The yeah, yeah. Ten beers versus. Eight. Six. Yeah, yeah, if I'm drinking yeah. a li- if I'm drinking a three point two percent beer, I'm drinking a lot. A lot of them. Yeah, right. Yeah. 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 It's drinking sounds like a lot more calories. You're I had a, down. Yeah. I had a buddy of mine. We we uh, we were friends. He lived in uh, like um, not Ardmore, but like somewhere like Stillwater or something, right? And, uh, and I remember visiting him, and we're drinking, and like it was fine. He went out. I, I he, nobody said a word to me. Like this is three point two or anything else, and I'm just like whatever. So he comes down. He's like, "Hey, I'm gonna come to Houston. Let's let's drink." I said, "Yeah, that sounds good, man. We'll go out." So we're out. We're only drinking beer, and like a couple hours into this, uh, I look over and he is shit faced drunk. I'm like, <laughs> "Dude, like, how are you so drunk?" He's like, "I don't know, man. I've only had like six beers. I don't know what's <laughs> happening here." I'm like. <laughs> Dude, like you gotta get it together, bro. Like it's the altitude. Dude, you like <laughs> you're not you're not you're fading quick and we just got here. Like we, you pre game or, or pre game. You got a pre game before you go out anyways. We definitely pre game, but even then, like, come on man, dude, get it together a little bit. But like he was in the car by like ten thirty. He was in the car sleeping. It I, I one AM we were at a buddy's house. He's standing up, walking over to the television. He's just standing there. He just drops trowel, just pees on the television, <laughs> right? But yeah, yeah. And I'm like, I'm like, I'm talking to him, and he's like, I'm on the couch, right? And he's like, No, it's good. I'm like, No, bro, it's not good. You're you're pissing on somebody's television, man. And he's like, No, it's close the door. I'm like, There's no door. You're in the living room, right? He he couldn't get it, so. He finally goes back to bed. The next morning, I'm like, I'm not, I'm not even touching that. I'm not even going to touch this right here. This is your deal. Next morning, I was like, dude, you totally got up and peed all over their television and their entertainment center, and you're just like uh, willy nilly yeah. about it. You weren't even holding it. It was just <laughs> you're just pissing everywhere, right? <laughs> so, yeah, he, that's when he told me. He's like, man, I think that I think y'all's beer is just stronger than mine. I'm like, no, it's the same. He's like, no, ours is three two or something. I'm yeah. like. Uh, well, no wonder. That's not even there. Yeah, no wonder. That's man. no this excuse for that. I know. This man no is excuse. a legend. I don't know. This man's <laughs> a legend. Yeah. yeah. Right. And, and whoever's right. house that was should have knocked him out. <laughs> yeah, right. Maybe hey, I'd, I'd have dropped Well, I'm not going to drop him. him. He's my buddy. <laughs> I, if you peed on my TV, Jen, I'm going to drop you. <laughs> so if we... We'll if, if, our, if, I don't know. And if I pee on your TV... You should probably just drop me. Right. For our listeners who are not in Texas or maybe not in the United States, like, so what are their chances of getting Martin House beer? Like, is that, is that something coming soon? Uh, well, depending on where you're at, make friends with someone that lives here. <laughs> okay. Uh, Ship it to you. Yeah. Tavor, ta- uh, Tavor, yeah. Tavor has it's like, some of our stuff. Yeah, so it's weird because we'll send beer to this company that will then do like a, a mail in sort of like order through the mail sort of thing yeah yeah they're um, like a monthly beer club right yeah yeah um but we're also looking to get into like new mexico oklahoma louisiana just sort so of slowly surrounding texas then yeah. go out from there is it illegal to ship beer in the mail through the usps it oh. is fedex you're fine yeah, yeah. fedex you'll yeah. okay, do whatever yeah. all right, all right. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. you tell okay. them it's craft soda yeah Thomas yeast Kraft samples, soda. root beer. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> or samples. I mean, the pickle beer. Just it's it's pickles. I got some family in Croatia. Collect- I need to collectible send some cans. Too, so. yeah. <laughs> yeah. There you right. go. That's how like my well, it's my cousin. He uh, had a huge bourbon collection. When I say huge, I mean like 
huge. Like he had all the pappies, just everything. Mm. <clears throat> and he had to insure his collection as collectible bottles. <sighs> not as a bourbon collection. Yeah. Because then it's a fire hazard because of how much he has. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. How many bottles does that <laughs> right, right, right. constitute? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. You might be there. And when, <laughs> no. he, yeah. and when he moved, like he would have to pack them all up before the movers came because they wouldn't move it. Yeah. Oh, wow. Makes it, well, I mean, you got to think. Like a bottle of Pappy, that's that's gnarly. That's a lot of money. I have, to, I have to show you like the picture of his bookshelf. Yeah, it's, definitely. It's ridiculous. That's crazy. Uh, so uh, I, think, I think we're ready uh, to do the grab him in grab the brisket. brisket. Beer review. Wow. Dang, that yeah. was very nice. Yeah, that was Let's great. do this. You guys killed it. Yeah, I feel like we should have probably warned them before we just busted into song right there. But uh, it's fine. Uh, this beer we got is uh, from Martin House. Uh, it's called Buffalo Wangs. Literally a buffalo wing sauce. Buffalo Wangs. Sour beer. Uh, tell us about the can, Jan. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, I haven't had a chance to look at it. Just tell so us about it anyway. It's fine. That's fine. I will. I okay. mean, we have like can. literally like um, two people who work here here. But yeah, go ahead, Jan. <laughs> yeah. So just from because I'm a novice or whatever else, right? Y'all turn over a, a large a large amount of cans and whatever. It, this is a new product you came out with. Hence, why you wrapped it versus why you it's a staple in the stores and whatever else, right? Yeah. So we get this all the time, and I talk about the wraps, and I used to give it so much shit. Until I realized why people were rapping and why they weren't, right? Um, but I love the style because this is definitely B dubs. It has that B dubs style right there. Yeah. Right. If you've been <laughs> to B dubs, if you've been you've yeah. seen that menu, you've seen that block title, that's that's what it's about. So yeah, it's just like perfectly cooked habanero uh mm-hmm. hot ass wings on the yeah. front of it. Mm-hmm. Right? Uh it looks delicious is what it looks like. You wanna tell us a little bit about the about the beer? Or you got the idea, whatnot? Um I don't, I mean, it was a Suge idea, uh, kind of just coming up with the initial recipe. It was like, well, what is buffalo sauce? So it's Frank's and butter, right? Oh, yeah. Uh, That's so, the OG. Yeah. Yeah. What is, um, what is the official, like, style of beer for this? Uh, it's a sour beer. The base is sour. And then we kind of just, like, threw, like, um, some paprika, some cayenne. There is actual Frank's in this beer. Oh. Um a little Dude, bit of salt, so yeah. this is great. Okay, all of our sour beers are like pretty much the same base. So if yeah. you had a sour beer from us, unless it like is obviously different, most of them are like the same base. We just start there and then add crazy stuff to it. I mean, it smells spicy. Yeah. Just give it a smell. Well, it has that. It's a little spicy. It definitely has that buffalo. Yeah, s- that, that that vinegarish. You know. Yeah, smell to this. The right? acidity of the beer definitely helps bring the point across. I think. Yeah. Oh yeah. Sure. Oh yeah. All right, I'm going in. Oh man, I was getting yeah, sick of that taste, thing. Yeah, it's, it's, it's got the spice. You can I'd taste it. It's not super spicy. sour. It's, it's not, yeah, spice. The spice. Okay. I would say if if you were aiming for buffalo wing, you nailed it. Yeah. That, that's, <laughs> that, I mean, it. that, that is it. like B-dubs, right? that is a buffalo wing. Right yeah, that there. was also another thing to mention. Vinegar wing sauce. This was a release for Super Bowl. We released okay. this for Super Bowl last year, along with the ranch beer. So okay. we did we did them both in tandem. Nice. So. You do yeah. any kind of like Irish car bomb with the two of them and pour them together and drink oh, it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, when we, yeah when when it first came out, we oh, I was definitely mixing them because mm-hmm. once I get the ranch, by it's just straight up is it's not like horrible. It's not bad, but it is just ranch beer at the end. Right. It's a condiment, yeah. right? It's got to go on. Something. But yeah, when you're you you know when you're out at the pool, you definitely don't want to drink a bunch of ranch <laughs> and uh, you also don't want to drink a bunch of buffalo wing beer either. So <laughs> cutting cutting the buffalo wing with the ranch made it a lot more drinkable. So I was definitely drinking them <laughs> pretty this, heavy, not going to lie. It reminds me a lot of your, your spicy pickle beer, to be honest. Uh, it doesn't yeah. have the tartness of the pickle, but it's similar to me. I like it's the same. It's the same base. The, no pickle. Except that one got like the spicy pickle brine, and this got Frank's. Okay. So. Yeah. I feel like this beer was one of many that I would put into like the uh, beers you could brine a chicken with category. I was, I was just <sighs> thinking that Dude. same thing. I was like, this would be really good. To, yeah. Like, yeah. Or even like you incorporate this into a mop sauce, yeah. right? Yeah. You just mopped, mm-hmm. right? Just over and over again, whatever you're doing. Yeah. I could yes. definitely see that. Yes pork loin or something yeah whatever just keep going 
Okay. We have an employee that does that. Like he'll he gets real excited when we release like salsa verde or spicy pickle. He's like, oh man, I'm about to cook. I'm about to cook with this stuff all weekend. We're like, oh, cool. nice. <laughs> all right. nice. I'm, I'm, about, I'm about to make this really, really got, awkward. Man? I'm about to make it really awkward because I'm going to ask John to review it first. Me? No. Oh. True master. Okay. <laughs> so we, we, we score 1 to 10. Explain on, the rating system. Yeah, and the yeah, rating yeah. system is completely biased personally in your own. Like, that's it. There's yeah. no other. It's so, not like a standard or anything. Just what do you think about the beer? But in our system, 5 is like middle of the road. It's not like, oh, 50%. That's shit. It's like. It's okay. It's fine. It's yeah, good. like okay. if, okay. It's, it's, if you get a five, you're like, okay, I could, I would buy this. If yeah, all the store, I would. Buy, I would if it's like, in a cooler, I'll drink. It. If it's all the yeah. name, I'm buying it no matter what. So, but if you're just taking a sip, you're like that's oh, a five. Yeah, I'll take a, I'll, t- I'll take a four pack of that. And we eight, also eight, eight is great. Nine is like have to have it. You know, that's yeah. usually kind of where yeah. we, we give go. decimal points too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, you can good, do good, decimal. good, good, good. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I want to give it a six point nine. I but it's high. Knew but, you were going to fucking but, do but, that. But, uh, <laughs> but no, it's it, it's actually better than that. I would I'm, I would personally give it like a seven and a half. Okay. Yeah, am 7.5. I blown away? Am 7.5. I blown away? No, but also, I do I I do drink this. I actually do drink this beer. So <laughs> okay, I like it a lot. Zach, All right. <laughs> uh, I mean, I guess I'll I, I agree with that. It's it for me. It's two parts. It. It's pretty close to what it says it is, uh, but would I want to drink it all the time? You know, not really. So maybe six point nine. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's funny because we have a we have a lot of people who like grade it based on that. Like, could I drink a six pack of it? Is how some people drink it yeah. or grade it. I don't grade it like that. I just grade it like like does I taste it and do I like it right when I taste it? Yeah. I feel like you guys are underselling this one a little bit. Me too. Like I, I think this is a really. It tastes really good. Like I put a I, number on it. Put a number on it. I'm, I'm gonna go cool. with a eight point six. Let's eight go. six. Like yeah, I don't want to drink a six pack of them, but yeah. like to throw. Hey, hey, try this beer. Have one of these. Yeah, I, I love this. I think this sweet. tastes fantastic. Sweet, sweet. I would, I would definitely have this again. Thank I just you. gotta see if they have it in Houston. Yeah, now, so. yeah, right, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna jump in next. I'm right there with you, uh, and I think I probably could drink more of it other than I'd probably get heartburn like a motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. Uh, but I'm still gonna go probably eight point three. This is this is good. Yeah, I like this a lot. Eight six eight three. I'm sorry. Hey, you thinking we're homers? Is that what you're doing? No, I ain't gonna take a freaking Zantac. Like, I'm going even a, higher. Uh, uh, <laughs> some Rolaids or <laughs> something. Yeah, I don't know Zantac what is <laughs> happening here. <laughs> what? I know. Okay. I, it didn't taste that hey, spicy. Look, it is what it is. That's your score. You can take it back. Yeah. No. Okay. We don't want. Go to. ahead. Okay. I'm not ready yet. <laughs> okay, Alex. Go ahead. <laughs> I'm a little low. Oh, let me go real quick. Hold on. I'm sorry, Alex. Let me just go. I'm not ready yet. You know what? Actually, that was a dick move. That was intentional. Drink here. Let me try my drink. Okay. This is James. Alex. He he he'll stop you. And then he's got to have an extra sip, and everybody mm. has to wait as he has his extra sip. That's just how it goes. He's an asshole. Yeah. I don't. God damn it. <laughs> i got to cut all this shit <laughs> he's out. He's taking another. Yeah, just cut it. Okay. Just cut all this. I, I'm not going to. It's not. I'm not going low on this. For me, 6-6. Six, six. Boo. 6-6. Six, six. Boo. Here's the deal. <laughs> I'm having a hard time getting half. I feel like I've got scratchy throat. It is spicy. I I like this. I think this is a great. It's a great beer. I just six six for me. You can't you can't live in Houston and call that a spice. Yeah. It, it can't be spicy to you. My mouth is still. Hold on. Let me mute his mic. Alex. <laughs> yeah. 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 Hey, six six not a bad though. It's not a bad score. No no no. no, no. Score. Six six is good. Yeah. Okay. I'm going seven three. Okay. Seven three. I, I like it. A seven, I do this sevens whole are very thing good. Like, like Matt says, he doesn't like. Can I drink a six pack of this in one sitting? No. Could I drink two of them in one sitting? Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't okay. know. I don't hey, know. But good. while we're on the topic real quick, uh, this afternoon siesta, this is 8-4. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The one okay. that everybody listening will never get a chance to try? This is the yeah, 8-4. This is why you should go in the brewery, by the way. That's, that's okay. a lot of Martin House beers, right? Yeah. You didn't get them already, you're not going to get them. I'm yeah. way higher than 8-4 on that one. Yeah, yeah. I'm higher on that one, too. Okay. Well. I'm at least 9-3... Damn. Solid okay. nine three on this. One. You okay. up there, brother? Nice. This one is good. Yeah, I go high eight. It's good. I love this one. I'm just wondering if I was eating a I plate of wings all day. and I had this wing beer, would it just taste like beer? Yeah. Or yeah. Would it, it's like because I have that flavor <laughs> in my mouth already, it might yeah. just taste like regular beer to me. Totally. Yeah. yeah I just totally. Feel like it we should have had wings. <laughs> we should have wings. Yeah. Right. <laughs> this uh, is a treat. I really, you know, 
Yeah, looking at the fridge, like, what are we going to have y'all review? I would have loved to y'all have y'all do afternoon siesta, but you had already been drinking it. So yeah. it's like, I don't know, whatever. If, you, didn't, if you didn't give me some kind of crazy beer, I would have been disappointed. I know, I know. I'm, hey, there I'm, you go. I'm super. Well, that's what I'm saying. I'm like yeah. heartbroken because I looked at the ranch last night. <laughs> oh, and yeah. I think Bob even was like trying to buy it off me. And I was like, no, dude, you're not kidding. You're not getting my ranch beer, man. I don't know when. I, I might not ever open it up. I'm going to keep it in my fridge. Like, I can't put it on display because. It might explode. It might fucking blow up. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it's just going to stay in my fridge for, like, hopefully ever. That's one of those things I don't think you could ever market outside the United States. Because oh. I think, like, people outside the U.S. think ranch is the most disgusting oh, thing yeah. ever. You know, like, yeah. you can never sell that anywhere <laughs> well, what's else. The, uh, You're you wrong. You saw, the like, where the the kid or the lady or whatever she was, uh, she was she tried ranch for the first time. Like, somebody had sent her, oh, like, I a bottle that. of ranch. Yeah. And she's in Europe somewhere. And she tries it for the first time. And she's like... Oh, this is like this is really good. This is a really like, she's not like super energetic about it. She's like, oh, this is a really good dip. Oh wow, this is really good. And then people started sitting here like, try it with pizza. <laughs> try it with uh, <laughs> this. Is that you know? the, the English girl? The, the I think yeah. so. The blonde girl. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's funny. super hilarious. And then so then she had this whole channel she set up to where she was just like. People recommending what to eat it with, and she's eating it with. She's like, "Oh my god, this is so great!" Right? Yeah. TikTok so, is so weird. Yeah. yeah. Is that what TikTok? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, it was TikTok. yeah. Well, you know, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Have your condiment with food. Yeah, that makes sense, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. Let me just oh, try this mustard by itself. Yeah. Is right. that how she tried yeah. It yeah. Well, I think yeah. I think so, but like in uh, but I think like in Europe or whatever, like uh, mayonnaise is like a thing, right? Like yeah, French fries and, and and mayonnaise. Is that really what they do? Pulp yeah, fiction, it's right? definitely a thing. So I just started yeah, doing yeah. this <laughs> Pulp fiction. myself. It's, it's so freaking fire, dude! It's so delicious. <laughs> I'm from Pennsylvania. We put mayonnaise on it. I love everything. it. Really, Duke's yeah, mayonnaise yeah, yeah. or Hellman's. Uh, yeah. Duke's is great. Hellman's is great. But I, I do a little uh, sriracha, yeah. and then I get those spicy nugs from Wendy's, man. And I just I double dipping, man. Double dipping and tearing them up. I love them. That's the next beer coming out from Martin House. Yeah, right. Ranch, <laughs> ranch, chicken nugget, oh, <laughs> sriracha yeah, beer. <laughs> hey, you never easy, know. Easy. So money. I mean, so I mean, it's kind of funny how like notorious or infamous we've become for these sort of things. Um, sorry. Um, like, I think there has been a brewery that's reached out to one of like. At an event, like approached one of our brewers and be like, "We'll collab with you, but only if it's a mayonnaise uh, themed beer." <laughs> wow. We've thrown like, around like hollandaise or sriracha uh, mayo. Yeah, or, uh, we do it. Yeah. We do the aioli. We listen. We're not afraid to throw mayonnaise in a beer. We'll Why not? It. Why would you <laughs> someone's going to do it? Don't someone's going to do it. Yeah, yeah. someone's going to do it. It's Why would you not do this? I mean, yeah. ran- isn't ranch like? Is it's just it mayo it's just mayo. Like, it's it, yeah. it's mayo, yeah. buttermilk, or or whatever cream, and then and then the ranch dressing. So we're almost there. That's it. Scared we're to death, there. but I'll try it. <laughs> like my <laughs> my daughter used to work at a pizza place, and uh, people are always like ranting and raving like over the 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 ranch dressing, and like it would stop her after you deliver pizza, and, and they'd stop her like, hey, how do you make your ranch dressing? Like how do y'all make it fresh? She's like, yeah, we make it fresh in house. Well, what do you do? She's like, just turn your packet over. That tells you the directions. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And it, the problem is nobody wants to waste a cup of mayonnaise oh. with a cup of, of uh, you know, it's just like, it's not that hard to make it, but yeah. nobody does it. You know? Right. So it's easier yeah. to go. Wingstop. Man, they have the best ranch. I'm sorry. It's so good. Yeah. Just say, give me two of those. I got another question. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, glassware. Because I know that like, some places, they have different beers, different classes. Does that make any difference at all? Like, what is the point? Like, or do you guys do that kind of thing here? What do you mean? Like more elaborate. Like are you are you only like, serving like a barrel uh, like aged one? Like the goblet. Like one of those goblets. Yeah, yeah, like a yeah. different shape. I don't know what they're called even. Like I know like there's a, a pint tulip. and then there's all the yeah, other tulip. different weird shape yeah. shit. Yeah, so it, it, it definitely does matter. Like uh, I'm like a certified beer server, level one Cicerone. Gotta <laughs> drop it. Gotta <laughs> Dude, I got I got Is that it. like behind so the title? title? I got hey, it. Hey, what's <laughs> the title now? What was your title? Like you're here at the company. Oh uh, yeah, I'm the head brewer. Head, yeah, head brewer, brewer with what what is the title well, at the end? Level, well, you're supposed to say uh it's certified beer server is what it's called. But it's level one level one Cicerone. Okay, so level so two Cicerone. is like actual Cicerone. Cicerone uh, is like the equivalent to a small beer Somalia. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. So okay. so your head Brewer, level one Cicero. That's 
Let's go. Dude, that's put that on a freaking business card. Let's get these things out. It is on my resume. There it is. I see you sitting around like American Psycho style, like sliding your little business card over. Right, right. Oh, nice paper. Nice white paper. That's Oxford white. Yep, that's right. No, level one's not much to be proud of. Level two is too hard. But I also have my Yeah, I was going to say, we're both level one. We're both level one. That's what I'm saying. All right. And everybody that works at Flying Saucer. So it's not really that. So impressive. production, uh, operations, production, operations manager, also slash. level slash dash level one Cicero. Server. He Very also he also did some uh, master brewer stuff. He's got a certificate from the master brewers. Oh, nice. I do not. So yeah, this guy he's a real deal. He leveled up. So why does why does the glasses make a difference? That's so it depends on the style of beer that you're doing, and it'll help the way that the top flanges in or out. It affects the head, like the way the head is perceived, it like will hold. Mm-hmm. Depending, it also will help with how flavors are released. Yeah, the <laughs> hands going up, it's freaking guys, man. <laughs> so, like you know, a pint glass, you're not actually supposed to drink out of pint glasses. Like they were not made for serving alcohol in. They were meant for mixing behind the bar. Uh, we're but fucking they're up. They're stackable. They're super durable. Yep. And they're cheap. So. That is what we drink out of, but you know the one, like I said, the ones that flange out, those are going to be the ones with like really aggressive heads. You want to get, you want to get a lot of the CO two out. You're just going to probably crush that beer. Mm. The smaller glasses with the tulip, it's to help hold the head in, hold the flavor in, and smaller amount because it's a higher ABV. Those are for your How stouts. much does that? Yeah, that's for your stouts. So, how much does that actually affect the drinking experience? That's personal preference, but part of it is like presentation as well. Yeah, you know. Like, yeah, that's right. You you eat with your eyes, you drink with your eyes, right? It yeah. looks, you know, aesthetically pleasing. You're like, yeah, this is great, right? right? Yeah. What you yeah. see is the first thing, yeah. Yeah. And then what you smell. And well, I think I think there's a I think I read this somewhere that let's say you're eating like you cook a steak at home and maybe you overcooked it or under whatever it didn't cook it right. If you were to look at a picture of, like, a perfectly cooked steak, the way in your mind you perceive a perfectly cooked steak, and eat your steak at the same time, your brain will be tricked, and you will actually grade your steak higher uh, than what you would have had you just had it, but whatever. Totally. Uh, So you could always, when you submit your beers... Just put a picture of his perfectly yeah. crap. I was going to say, do you want me so to send a picture of a so ranch bottle? I mean, yeah, we got, <laughs> right. Buffalo, we got Buffalo wings on the there Buffalo wings. Yeah. yeah. So if yeah, I look at go. this Martin House can. Yep. And eat wings. And drink, drink Bud Light. Schlitz malt liquor. Nope. It, you're so going to be disappointed. It's going to be the same. Yeah, yeah, the opposite. <laughs> but if you eat fire. wings, your wings will be better. That's what we're saying. Hmm. You said steaks. Well, I just use steak as an analogy. Okay. Yeah. Negra oh. Modelo is like my favorite beer. It's a good beer. Like I love it. That that's yeah. my favorite beer. And I did a blunt like it was blind taste testing, like actually blindfolded, and I was just like, "Are you really trying to slide a Belgian beer in here?" Like I do not like this. I can't <laughs> believe you're doing this. And I like right before I took on off, I was like, "Please don't be something I like." And as soon as I took it, I was like, "No, <laughs> that's my favorite right. beer." <laughs> right, right. And I mean, I still love it, but like, yeah, not knowing what I was drinking, my mind was good. Like trying to break it down by flavor my mind was going everywhere so that's yeah. crazy yeah <laughs> i'm right there with you the mexican lagers negro modelo oh yeah that's yeah, the way that's that's my, that's my go-to uh, yeah that's my island beer like everyone's always like oh if you get stuck on an island what do you i'm like that's it <laughs> yeah, yeah just load the cases <laughs> up i'm good you know i've had uh i was in jamaica and uh i've had red stripe we had red stripe before right it's just a beer yeah. oh, everybody's been around for years stripe, right yeah. whatever I really don't particularly care for them. I mean, it's a cool little bottle they're in, right? It's like the old, uh, almost like the old Coors Stubby. Banquet bottle kind of, yeah. right? Um, however, when I was in Jamaica, I had it, and it tasted, it was like almost night and day. I don't know how much, how long this beer is sitting on the shelf where we're having it here in America or whatever else, but man, there, I was like, I, I was kind of like, you know, I've had them before, let me have one. My first restaurant was like, yeah, keep these coming because these are freaking amazing here in Jamaica. Yeah. Is that is the There's same? Two thing two things. First off, yeah, how long was that how long has it been since that beer was made? Yep. Also, who made it? 
right? Like, I don't know if I don't know if they have their own facility, but they could contract brew. That's so right. It could be a different. It could be a different brewery. You know. Okay. Yeah, and I've okay. already heard people saying that about like Yingling. You know, yep. there's a Yingling down here now. Well, yeah. Miller yeah. Coors. It's being made down the street at Miller Coors. It's not made yep. at Yingling. So like. It doesn't taste the same here. Fingers no. crossed. It you know it's it's supposed to. But you start to talk. I mean, unless it's the good, but it's water not good. chemistry is the exact same, the grain is the exact same. Like, well, the water chemistry alone, right? Yeah, That's totally. one thing that throws like beer from different regions tastes great in those regions, right? Yeah. Try to do it here. This it just doesn't come out. the Yeah. Same, do you guys right? have like a big effort here to like like normalize your water and everything? Like have it be the same the whole time? Yes. Uh, we we brought on like a whole new uh, water filtration system it basically strips out all the minerals and everything like that so we can build it back up Mm -hmm. to the exact profile that we want um i mean for most of our normal beers it's going to be you know it won't matter too much but if it's like a specific sort of thing like say our pills or the mexican lager or you know a really dark beer um stouts and such are going to require different. Mm. I was thinking, like for the, like the lighter beers, would make a lot big difference, but it also yeah. affects like the real dark ones too. Yes, totally. Mm. All right, cool. Yeah, totally. Huh. That's why you know. I mean that that's why like everyone loves Guinness. And that's why it's yeah. Fun, you know, because it's just always the same. That or? part, yeah, that part of the world. That's what they make as stouts because their water's so messed up. Yeah, I mean it's good. It's great for, but if they tried to make a pilsner, it would not be very good <laughs> right right, right. Yeah, they couldn't yeah. do it yeah it's just sense. not going to be good and that's what we don't we don't reverse osmosis but a lot of breweries nowadays can you know they'll reverse osmosis their water but you lose a lot of water that way so i would imagine you would right for the evaporation and, and whatever else right? yeah i think you i think it's like four you lose like three or four gallons for every gallon you get of reverse oh, osmosis wow. it's like a huge waste of water that's not good yeah no. and i mean it, for us it's just like yeah strip it down some and then you know our sodium's kind of high but that that's going to give us a little bit of a house taste, you know, whatever it's worth. Yeah. So helps round the beers out too. So we should call out those breweries that are doing uh, reverse osmosis because <laughs> yeah. their their green footprint is not really Yo, that green. We you recently we recently done some testing because that's one thing we're kind of trying to like tighten it down and we want to be as professional as possible. We are running like a real deal brewery. It's a business. Big time, right? Yeah. It's a big time brewery, and we started to look at some of the numbers and. The amount of water that goes down the drain is insane. Yep. Like it really, it, yep. you know, it's really crazy. So, yeah, you start to, and we're only one brewery, you yeah. know, and there are bigger breweries. So, that was one project I sort of took on. It was like working with this, um, it was like a grant funded, um, I guess, group team of people that uh, would come out to like manufacturers and, they did a couple breweries and so like just one of the things we looked at was like oh we could save you know almost three quarters of a million gallons of water a year um just by doing this one thing but on it, one pipe yeah on one on one pipe yeah that's one pipe oh, that we, it's a man i mean it's definitely like one of the main pipes but that's and only then, one pipe <laughs> and then it's like oh that's you're only saving you know twelve hundred dollars me yeah. <laughs> that's the unfortunate reality it's like yeah. Yeah. right have right. you guys ever tried to make like a non-alcoholic beer no never came up never like an idea of uh, it or? We there's been talks of like a low alcohol beer uh, which I mean I would love to do either of those but non-alcoholic beers are a little bit more tricky a little bit more nuanced just to like you basically make a beer and then take all the alcohol out which you either need like uh, like some sort of crazy membrane filtration, or you um, raise the beer up to the temperature that uh, ethanol alcohol boils, and you're left behind with a nasty cooked beer. So, <laughs> yeah, don't do that. Yeah. When the right, big right, yeah, John's when, like, yeah, well, don't do that. I mean, then. you yeah, can do yeah, it. Yeah, I probably won't buy that. Uh, one. Right when on. the big mega breweries do it, and that you know they got all the money, and it's still not that good. It's not so, good at all. Not yeah, that, I mean, yeah. not that we don't. We have a lot of money, but not like to oh, put God, into God. non-alcoholic beers. One of those, one of those no, what was it? Uh, no, no, this was a gluten-free beer. Oh, God. The sorghum yeah. beers. Oh, like Red Bridge. 
That is the oh, I yeah. can't believe that's allowed to be sold. Yeah, right. It's so bad. Are you guys ever having those sore gum beers? No. No. Don't if you see no. Red Bridge or whatever, do not go near it. That's Do you really like, want to fit oh. in that bad? Like no. just Ooh, drink some that man. tastes good. It's, right, you know, right. like without uh, gluten in right. it. Like, God. It's, that is not beer. That yeah. is not I mean, shouts out to them for trying, but <laughs> well, so, so y'all are independently owned, operated, whatever, right? So and and y'all's facility are y'all at max right now? Are y'all have y'all maxed out your facility? Or you have plenty of room to keep doing whatever you want to do. Uh, yes and no. Okay, it's always there's always a bottleneck. Um, so like uh, last year, year before, we just got like a, a you know brand new canning line, and so we were like relieving some of the constrictions that that uh, having a smaller line uh, brought up. But now we're we have a second brew house uh capable of brewing about twice as much at a time as what we're currently doing uh we're just like in the very last final stages of just like any day now bringing it online oh wow Um, nice but we're pretty good honestly it's it's kind of interesting it's like uh we'll we'll beef up our production side and then it's like okay well now the ball is in sales court so we have a lot of beer now you know sometimes it's just getting it out to people or figuring right. out who wants it you know so y- y'all are in the HEBs which I've seen whatever so are you in all the HEBs in Texas I think so yeah I think nice so. Yeah, okay I, I would they just came so, by yeah. recently because of the new ones opening up in DFW area yep and they were like super hyped and I think we're like I think we're in all of them okay yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because I, I, mean, I don't think they'd be happy if you seen. guys weren't doing yeah. that well with them. So yeah. Exactly. You know I mean? yeah. No, y'all are selling out. H-E-B, like I, yeah. I look for certain things. And I'm like, well, I see the sticker where it should be. They're like, well, that's not there. <laughs> that yeah. sucks. You know, yeah. and I, I'll come back tomorrow. But yeah. we, we had a really good person at our at our local HB yeah, for a while. Have a hookup. Mm. Yeah. He, he was. Oh, uh, nice. what, uh, uh, what was Beardo? Beardo. Yeah. yeah. So basically, he just like he could always offer something new to you. You come in like. He goes, hey, just got this in. Yeah, it's coming out this weekend, or we hey, got it. We just hey, got it. Be here on Saturday, or be here th- right. Thursday. You'll be able to get it. I'm like, great, you know, whatever. Uh, but if you look like, there's a lot of independent owned breweries out there. And then you have like these big, like Anheuser Busch, right? Which is not even owned. They don't own their own stuff. They're they're owned by somebody else now, right? It's like Embev owns Anheuser and like Corona, and like this list keeps going on and on forever. Or, or maybe it's Coors Miller owns corona one of them does uh but like and then you have Coors and miller right like they own like almost every other beer out there like there's yeah. like three major companies or two major companies that own like almost everyone yeah. and then you have all all the i'm mean, not small guys whatever the small breweries or whatever that are that are going and in houston we had one of ours was bought out right carbach carbach okay yeah. carbach was a local owned brewery and they got to a point and they sold out to is it Embev Anheuser Busch? Mm-hmm. Yep. That that bought them and people were like, "You freaking sold to those POSs, dude! <laughs> Why would you do that? Keep selling your soul. Be, yeah, devil, you're selling right? your soul. Why would you do that? You know? Yeah, yeah. I know it's money. That's why they I did get it. why it's yeah, money it was, and whatever they else. They made a lot of money. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I get it, but you know, there's also certain you're like you don't have a control over everything. Maybe you're not. Maybe maybe you don't. Maybe they do. I don't know. Um, but but y'all are like family owned small operation y'all aren't are we going to see y'all owned by Miller Coors soon no depends on how much money they owe yeah, there well, it is they, right? they get a billion we dollar check money talks. Talks. Yeah, we don't yeah. get to make that decision yeah. but hopefully we're included <laughs> in would, that would, buyout would, right. Right. I'm <laughs> hey would, would you be upset if you're like okay we're owned by Miller Coors now would that like ah oh, man or no be sad for a second again, but like then said, they're like, "We're going to give you personally a two million dollar check." Well, so here's the thing, right? <laughs> right. So oh. They're kind of sneaky. They're kind of sneaky little snakes, you know. Like what happened with the revolver? Like they came in, they're like, "We yeah. just want eleven percent. We want eleven percent. We're going to beef up production. We're going to get you out. Cool. Okay. Cool. Well, next year they got up to twenty five percent, and then mm. fifty, mm. and then seventy, and then revolver is no longer revolver. Revolver is That's completely right. bought out now, and so it's one of those things where like. I mean, if we got bought out, which I, you know, don't think is a Y'all thing. Y'all are doing but really well. There's always going to be there's always going to be money, I'm just right? Curious. But if we got bought out, me and Zach would probably be in some kind of plan where we would probably get paid pretty well for that buyout. 
Yeah. And at the end of the day, I mean, yo, I do we this. We probably wouldn't have jobs. <laughs> well, but we'd, we'd have some sort of severance. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Well, yeah, and right. A, a lot oh, of this times. This great on my resume. A lot of yeah, times right. the companies will buy out, and then we would be given like an option for a package to stay on, you know, for a set period of time indefinitely. Now we'd be under their control, you yeah. know, mm-hmm. but. Well, they definitely want you to stay on to teach. Our Everybody replacements. Else. Hopefully. Right, hey, right. Hopefully. Hey, you know what? Uh, nope. I'm leaving. I'm out. So yeah. so my wife does uh, reverse logistics for all the foreign breweries, right? So, and, and even domestic, like Lagunitas out of California. Uh, there's there's breweries here in Texas, whatever. But they basically track and hold all these kegs at their warehouses, right? Okay. So the name of the company was uh, Satellite Logistics, and now it's uh, it got bought out by Hillebrand. So now it's Hillebrand. Uh, but and and then they just got bought out. Now it's DHL, right? So the shipping okay. company yeah. they own whatever, right? But so, like one of her warehouses will have like four hundred thousand kegs, yeah, in one in one warehouse. But they're all across the United States, and they're shipping these kegs, you know, back in these containers that go back to, you know, whatever brewery yeah. in in Europe, you know. Huh. So it's like it's almost like a reverse logistics, but but she's always talking about beer, and I'm like. This is great because I'm always drinking beer, <laughs> and I'm like we have a lot. In, we have a lot in common because yeah. we talk about it. Can like one of those kegs fall in the back of that truck, or yeah, 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 yeah. And they, they, they do well, a thing. Don't they have like, GPSs on all of them to where they can kind of track. Track so maybe some of them they do. Yeah, they, they can okay. track whatever. But like maybe the smaller, the very big breweries, they 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 mark them. It's like crazy. Like they have like a yellow line on them or you know, some paint, blue paint with this. Oh, that's this brewery. You have to know. Right when you're staring at them, because you get you get a sea of of kegs, you know, yeah. uh, and they also do one that's like an eco bev, or which is like they're like you you can't just like you have a bad batch or bad bad beer that went out, right? All these kegs and mm-hmm. whatever you got to recall everything. Yeah. So they you take it to them, and then they dispose of all your stuff for you uh, that way. Because there's, there's a whole lot of like liability reasons, and you can't just dump that shit on the ground, right? And for yeah. whatever the I don't know why you can't, but. I, mean, I guess you could. I, I don't. You get sued, right? You, water you, treatment. Yeah, water treatment. Like yeah, it. they don't like it. Uh, yeah. um, they tend to frown upon that. Yeah, so I was curious. Have y'all run into like those type of batches where you've had to pull pull a batch out and go, "Hey, look, something's wrong. Couldn't couldn't can't sell it or or hit the store and had to pull it out." Have y'all have y'all run into that kind of stuff or no? Um, fortunately, very few. Times. Very few. Good. Uh, great yeah. imperial tr- uh, salty lady. Oh well, that was. Years ago, <laughs> yeah. so fortunately, um, but we do have like a, a quality control team okay. that they keep eyes on everything pretty much. You know, they have like cans from every single batch that we put through our canning line. Just like they storm hot to see what happens, they storm cold. You know, um, just to see like if you know uh, some of the people. We've had complaints along the years of just holding on to beers for just so long that because our beers are so sour that some of the can liners start to, like, come off the can. They're okay. Like, what the hell is this inside my beer? Right, yeah. right, right. Um, and just that's, drink it. That's fine. years and years and years after being in the can. Um, but we just have to know before people say, you know, what is yeah. this? Right, right, right. Because so, right. Yeah. you guys only can, right? You have no bottles. Yeah, correct. Because I know, like, the color of the bottle can make a difference, right? Mm-hmm. right? Like, if you have a clear bottle and it's out in, like, light all the time, it'll get the skunky flavor to it, right? Right. Yep. Yeah, mm-hmm. okay. But you guys just can't, don't we? No, yeah, no you have to worry yeah, about that. Only. Exactly. Yeah. And that's what, every time there's been an incident, we just beefed up the, the QC lab. Like, the QC lab is sure. tenfold sure. what it was, you know, the, the right. last incident. Like, yeah. every company has this, right? Yeah. I, I knew y'all would. I just didn't know whatever. So We, we did an Imperial Sour, like, years back like when i was volu- like when i was volunteering so the long time ago and uh it was imperial uh salty lady and they just became bombs and like i've talked to some of the <laughs> like one of our good one of my good friends who's now the lead sellerman row and he was saying that he like he as went a to, like, driver as a joint he was a driver he like went to pick some up and he could just hear him like bam 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 <laughs> in the back of the truck <laughs> he, was, he was like so nervous wow. he was like super Little scared time bombs so, yeah, yeah exactly, yeah. exactly. Can you can imagine like skit like hey I got these <laughs> right yeah, yeah. oh man that's yeah. crazy so yeah beer the majority of beer especially our beers and most modern breweries store cold Drink fresh. That's 
the way to yeah. go. Yeah. yeah. That's what it should be done. Yeah, yeah. don't hoard your beer. Just drink it. Right. And why yeah. don't why ho- is it sitting in your garage? Yeah. <laughs> You're yeah. doing something wrong. Don't hold on to that ranch beer for <laughs> right. forever. Yeah, yeah. Get it was, out there and drink it. I was trying to remember. There was like some – There was some li- like so there's a Eighth Wonder Brewery in yeah. Houston. Yeah. They had some limited edition beer or something like that when they, uh, the Astros won the World Series. And my dad bought the six pack and like left it in his pantry for like four years. I'm like, there's <laughs> no way that's gonna taste good. That like like don't. And it's like he's like, no, it's gonna be good. I'm gonna save it for whatever. I'm just like, <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be the worst beer you ever drink. Yeah. You cannot let that age. Like, it's like my I mean? beer, my yeah. beer fridge in the garage. Like oh, I have good. so many different beers in there. But they're cold like, though, right? Oh yeah, they're cold. That helps. That helps. Yeah. Right? For sure. Helps. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Some of them have been back there. For I'm a okay few with years. That. Like when somebody comes over, <laughs> I'll drink like, that beer. You can try I'm anything okay you that. want. I was like, but if it's in the very back corner, I'll let you know it's probably been there a couple of years. Yeah, you can drink it if you want to. I drank some of those. Yeah, <laughs> don't do it. Well, it also comes down to what style. You know, yeah, don't beer. Just, yeah. just like oh, a, you know that those log. It's hard to brew loggers. And pretty much when they're ready to drink, like they need to be stored. But once they're ready to drink, drink them because if you sit on those, they're not going to be good. Imperial, like you, you know, you got a thirteen percent barrel aged stout. Yeah, go ahead and sit on it for a couple of years. Dogfish one twenty. I do not like that beer fresh. It's not good. It's garbage. You let it marinate. But oh man, a couple <laughs> years in, it's pretty good. <laughs> so do you guys put expiration dates on it, or do there you, you put go, the Jan. like birth date on it? You know, canning date is what yeah. canning date. Yep. Yeah, yeah, it's up to you at that point. Yeah. Like, we're not telling you when to drink it by. We're just yeah. telling you we made it here. Yeah. yeah. So do you do you do send the out recommendations thing. to the sellers like this is how long it should be on the shelf for or something like that? We do. Yeah, yeah. we've got a date that like you know Ben and Keith when they get it they'll after this date we'll they'll contact us and say hey these kegs or cases are out of date even though it's not bad it's still like past our quality right. age you know. So yeah, totally. And there's there's no known pathogen that can survive the uh, environment that is beer. So you're not going to get sick from that beer sitting around. Yeah, you're just like gonna the flavor. Not yeah. yeah. That's and why they back all, in the day it was healthier to drink beer than it was water. Yeah, you exactly. Know, so. yeah. <laughs> yeah, they all and they all just start to taste the same after a while. You know, that's really the thing. It's not. I haven't really had a whole lot of beers that are like gross when they get old. They're just not, as not good. good. It's yeah, don't left cardboard, time, right? and you're like, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. I'm not going to dump them away now. There you go. <laughs> Try. I can have a dull beer. Yo, yeah. all the beers I have, I'm get in the fridge, crack it open, pour it in a glass. If you don't like it, dump it down the drain. You're doing me a favor and move on to the next one. Just you know, because, <laughs> like, I've got so many beers that are, yeah, getting old. It's like, if it looks interesting, try it. If it's not good, cool. Get rid of it. Should so. we start an infinity beer? Is that no. a thing? Oh. <laughs> so a Solera, I mean, that's more, like, on the brewery side, but... Um, like that's one thing that I think one of the founding owners is like pretty interested in is like uh almost like wild or sour uh program where it's like it's constantly aging but you're constantly pulling beer from it but at home probably not yeah, yeah. Not okay 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 I could dig that yeah. a little bit right it's yeah. like almost like a um what's the uh What's the bread that sourdough bread? Yeah. Right, you start yeah. to have a starter. Yeah, 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 yeah. Starter. yeah. yeah. and then like they have this in California. They have these breads like these are hundred year old starters that have been keep adding. Yeah. Right. Yep. yep. That's very cool. That would be yeah, it. Yeah. yeah. Put two barrels in, take two barrels out, keep on rolling. Why not? Yeah. Do yeah, it. Like yeah. just <laughs> do it. Yeah. <laughs> it's time and yeah. energy. I get it. All right, yeah, so we're getting close to the end here. Okay. Uh, this is where we usually turn it over and let you guys tell folks where to find um, Martin House, your, your personal social yeah, media. Yeah, so people want Martin House social media, whatever it is. They want to buy your beer. Where do they reach out? How do they get a hold of it? Oh, man, I had so many more questions, guys. I know, I <laughs> Way know. more questions. We'll just have to I'm come sorry. back out here, I guess. Yeah. Sorry, we'll okay. have to yeah. do it again. Yeah, All right. Yeah, part two, right? Yeah, nice. part two. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, if you're looking for us, it's Martin House Brewing on, we got a TikTok we got Facebook. We got an Instagram. Um, if you want the really cool, like, if follow us on social media. We always tell you on social media what we're releasing. Um, lots of taproom beers. That's where the cool stuff is. If it's a taproom beer, that does not mean it's going to get mass produced. So don't always, like, sit in and say, oh, this is just going to be a test batch. Like, sometimes we re- it really is only a taproom only. Um, but other than that, I mean, our core stuff and our seasonals, we – shouts out to HEB – Kroger, Walmart, 
a lot of liquor stores. Uh, if you're outside of Texas, check out Tavor. They probably have some, and if they don't, they will get some more. Um, yeah. yeah, or just That's move to Texas. Okay. Or just right. move to Texas. Like everybody else. Right. It's that easy. <laughs> the, oh yeah, don't. Yeah, hey, whoa, whoa, don't we're, move full, here we're full. Yet. We're yeah, full. Yeah, don't move. Don't move here <laughs> quite yet. Let Zach get a couple of rental properties, and then come on. <laughs> there let's <it> go. Is. <laughs> uh, That's funny. All right, that's, that's awesome. Funny. Okay, yeah, it's hey been guys. a blast, guys. Thank you for yeah. uh, having us. Thank you for coming on. It's Thanks for coming out. Great, definitely appreciate Absolutely. it, brother. And if you want to find anything out about grabbing the brisket, grab the brisket dot com. Uh, reach out to us, grabbing the brisket at gmail dot com. We appreciate having you guys on. Rock on! Thanks. Yeah. Cheers. Thanks. Thanks, everybody. We've been great. Dang it, Bobby! Just grab the brisket. We'd like to give a special thanks to Suckle Buster's Barbecue Rubs and Sauces. Bonner's Fiesta Spices, Cooley Nation Custom Koozies, Cambro Manufacturing, Yeti Coolers, The Smoke Sheet Barbecue Newsletter, and Dow Strong Knives. We definitely appreciate your support.